Welcome back to episode 156 of Cookies and Milk. I'm your host, William. I'm your host, Ben. Episode 156. Uh, we what's, don't have any cookies and milk or milk. Yeah. What's the topic, though? Uh, we talk more about Borderlands. That's true. Anything happen? Video games? No video games this week? The Switch Lite is experiencing drift. Some drift issues drift now. Drift compatibility? Yeah, drift compatibility. They can't link well with uh, the actual Switch. They yeah. can't pilot the Jaeger. Yeah, as it turns Keep out. Keep out of the flashbacks of their traumatic childhood. Yeah. Uh, is that it? Switch well, Lite? Is I that mean, the only news? I thought there was more news. What other news? Is that no news? I guess Link's Awakening came out again. That's true. Alright, so uh, Borderlands 3, we haven't gotten that though. <laughs> uh... It's, we got, like, not that much farther in at all. What, like, two quests? Right. Since we had the... Oh. Since... Oh. Yeah, like, two quests in since we did the last one. Uh... So, Zero's back. Zero is back. And then we saw, we get to see Maya a little bit. Yeah. Uh... It's so weird that we're just leaving Atlas. Yeah, that was a weird... I get... I get it will come back. We're definitely going to come back for, like, some stuff. Yeah. But it's also, like, uh, yeah, Atlas is, like, about to... Why do we need to stop them from getting to the vault again? Who, Molly Wan? What? The twins. They what, ha what happens if they get the vault? Well, it's a vault. And? And they're bad, right? Hypothetically, right in Vault in Borderlands One, the vault opens and the Vault Hunters shoot it closed. Yeah. In Borderlands Two, he summons the Warrior and the Vault Hunters shoot it and it dies. True. In Tales of the Borderlands, the uh, the Guardian of the Vault, what was it? The Vault itself opens up. Yeah, uh, and then they have to you do a whole robot fight to. Yeah, but there's a time skip. They lose at first. Yes, and then they come back. They didn't... Yeah, and then they robot fight part two. Yeah. And win. Yeah. Minimal cat, please. Still, though... Uh, and then... In Borderlands 3, they're going to... And this is... I don't know spoilers, this is my hypothesis. They open the vault, and the vault hunters shoot it closed. I mean, that's... There's... They're gonna get multiple vaults, though. That's the thing. Yeah, that's thing. the thing. Which is weird, right? I thought there were multiple vaults, but now there's one vault? There's one vault on... Uh... Promethea. Why are we leaving then? Because there's another vault there. On right? Athena's. Yeah. Uh, it's weird. Uh, coming, if you like, finished Borderlands 2, uh, the DLC and everything, and then immediately picked up Borderlands 3, you'd be like, what? Where are all the vaults? Yeah. Why are we chasing one vault? Yeah. When there's supposed to be so many vaults. Because it's so, it's so peculiar, um, I don't know if peculiar is the word, but it, it's a weird shift in focus. Right. Uh, when it's like, oh, we were just, we were literally just talking to, like, Katagawa Jr. Yeah. Uh. But Maliwan is still on Athena's. But it's on Athena's too? Yeah. They're getting to take my Maliwan troops. Did they, like, they didn't, like, pull out for Promethea. They're all, yeah, that's the thing, right? They're also attacking Athena's. So, like, on a two-pronged assault... On two different planets. Two-pronged assault usually implies one place. That's from true. multiple locations. Two-pronged, that's a, that's a two war, different that's a assaults. weird, yeah. I, I, because they were like, uh, I guess you guys have something to do with, uh, some knowledge of the Maliwan troops attacking us, and I was like, wait, hold on. Maliwan is also on a theme. How strong is Maliwan? Like, yeah. it's so... They're, then they're poorly executed, right? Yeah. Like, if you have enough power to assault two planets... You assault one planet. You assault one planet first, and then the next one. Right. I don't... You're just trying to lose. But, I mean, I guess if somebody flooded your ranks with bandits... Yeah. So all right. that would embolden you to do it. If all right, so here's the thing: if your army is now fifty-fifty, actual soldiers and bandits, you would want to send twenty-five percent of your actual troops and twenty-five percent of your bandits to one planet, and twenty-five yeah. percent of your actual troops and twenty-five percent bandits to another planet. Yeah. Okay. 
uh, instead of like 50% bandits as your siege on one place. Right. I mean, it does not, it doesn't bode well no. for Molly Wan. No. Uh, I can imagine if they'd want to split up those ranks because putting too many bandits on a, on one place, you already saw what happened. Yeah. They already stole a city and made it a, a, a tournament uh, to kill someone, like, to people to kill themselves to have sex with a guy. Yes. Uh, that, that was a weird one, right? Killavolt? Yeah. Killavolt was a weird one. Also, they, I, I saw a thing, I didn't get to read it, because I was, like, just on my phone, it was like, uh, Borderlands fixes, fixes glitch where boss yells too much. And I was like, is that the Killavolt fight? Because <laughs> he yelled the whole fight. Yeah. Also, the pacing in the game, as far as level ups and stuff go, kind of weird. Uh, getting so we both got class mods, but we can't equip class mods oh, yet. They start tossing class mods like candy at level thirteen, and we haven't gotten to the point where we can do it yet. We did. We just got to the point. We just got to the at point. At level sixteen, or that's fifteen or sixteen. Does that doesn't make any sense? Yeah, it's like oh, here's a little taste, and it's like I I can't eat this. Yeah, this is not a taste. Yeah. I guess I I thought class mods would have come up like during the quests, like, for character stuff. Yeah. Because there was a point in time where I watched a scene, like a cutscene, where Zane was going through stuff uh, and got an upgrade, uh, and Zero was there. And I thought, in my mind, that that was Zero coaching Zane into getting an upgrade for him. Oh, so yeah. getting a class mod for him. Uh, so I thought it was like, oh, there's, like, parallels for each and every character... Uh, As, uh, like with other vault events. like with Amara, like uh, Maya would help her get a class mod, like do that sort of thing. That would have been sweet. That would have been sweet, and it would have made it more. I don't know. It would have connected the characters more. Yeah. Uh, but instead, it's just an upgrade for a zero sword, which is good. Yeah. I'm not complaining about it, but like it was a. It was a weird kind of letdown that I had talked myself into. Yeah, that's fair. Uh... But, I mean, that's always the problem with games like this, is that, like, you have to compete with the hype that's in people's heads. Yeah. Uh, which is never easy. Yeah. Uh, that's why you gotta make a game like Death Stranding, where nobody has any fucking idea what you're doing, and then the game comes out and people have no idea what they're doing in the game. Yeah. It's unfortunate, for sure. Yeah. Uh, it's coming out soon. Can you believe that? What? Yeah, like November. November? Like November, yeah. That's real soon. Yeah. It's, it's like the end of September right now. Yeah, so we're like a month and a half away from Death Stranding being a real game that you could buy in stores. I guess, right? Like, can you imagine that? Walking up to GameStop and being like, oh, look at all these games on the shelf. I'll take this Death one. Death Stranding. Death Stranding. <laughs> As if it hasn't been an enigma in the game scene. Like, what, two years now? Yeah, like two plus years. Jeez. Uh, I guess the same kind of thing. Uh, it's kind of interesting thinking of uh, not being really into the game scene and just like, oh, I think I'll take this one. Like, I think I'll take Sw Super Smash Brothers, huh? That sounds like fun. Yeah. <laughs> like, not having it pre-ordered, not getting it the day of... Oh, I'll pick this one up. That looks like fun. Yeah. It's got Mario! I know that one! <laughs> yeah. And then there's Bayonetta and Joker and... Yeah. Who-who? Uh, Fatal Fury guy. What's his name? Ken. <laughs> I really want to say Ken. That's not it. Terry Bogert. Terry Bogert, yeah. <laughs> Terry Gogert. <laughs> Terry Gogert. <laughs> Do you remember, uh, there was a bunch of pictures going around of, like, a sexied up uh, Rule 63 to Terry Bogart, and I'm like, is that who's getting into Smash? Because I saw that first. That's a real, that's a real character. What? In the game, SNK Cuties or whatever? Fatal Cutie? Fatal Cute? No, that's what it says on... That's what it says on Terry, Terry, on Terry Bogart's hat. Uh, wait, does it say that on man Terry Bogart also? It wouldn't. <laughs> It says Fatal Fury yeah. on his hat. Uh, SNK Heroines is the game. And they just... and they So they ran out of heroines. <laughs> and they made... So they were like... Terry with the 
I, Terry, no, I, I don't know, Terry Bogart, and that one, and people are like, God, I really hope Terry Bogart as a girl comes into Smash as like an alt costume, and it's like, oh, probably not, right? <laughs> but probably not. I mean, who knows? Uh, yeah, I mean... Is she dressed as sexily in the game in the Fatal Cuties? Oh, uh, probably. The right? game is called SNK Heroines. <laughs> oh, uh, but that's fine. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yes. Oh uh, boy. Yeah, I was. That was a weird one because that was almost like a launch title for the Switch. Uh, where SNK it was like, Heroines. SNK Heroines. Yeah, it was like a launch title for the Switch. What? It came out like real early. In. That's so weird. Uh, I thought it was like a 3DS game. Because uh, I've only seen some gameplay of it and it does not look good. It, yeah, it's it was so weird. You've never heard a fighting game really like sell itself on like simple uh, simplified combat, and it's like you just like hold the button to do combos, and it's like what? what they made the game for girls. Easy. No, like <laughs> weird that's, thing to say. No, 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 no. I don't mean like. Was that their mindset going in? Can't, couldn't have been right. You can't sell a game to girls based. All right, I, I'm not gonna be. Uh, when you make a game filled with a bunch of skimpily dressed anime babes, your primary market isn't like, I hope the lesbians will like this one. Or if it is, that's woke of you. No, it's not. <laughs> it's not. Minor woke points for that no. uh, sexist <laughs> game you made. Straight men can't make a game for lesbians. They, they can't do Actually, it. wait. Left 4 Dead 2. No, not Left 4 Dead 2. <laughs> the Last, Last of Us 2. Oh. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm Left sure. Left for Dead too. Bill's here. <laughs> <laughs> Champion of the gay community. Oh no. <laughs> Self medicating? What? You can't say that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh oh. Uh, yeah. Uh, this la- took a weird turn. La- <laughs> Uh, I'm excited for Terry Bogart in Smash. Also, no, you're really not. nice, uh, <laughs> good thing to say. Glad that was the end of that conversation. And hard cut. <laughs> I'll cut it there. Uh, what? Uh, all right. Here's a hard mode. Hard mode. Uh, uh, you have one game. Uh, so people come into your house, right? You you have a group. Uh, of, like, four strangers coming into your house. Uh-oh. Uh, <laughs> they're breaking in. You are playing one game on the screen. One game. To scare them all away. What's your game? So, what in what definition of scared do you want me to say? I want them to not want to be in your house anymore. Uh, like, something that someone would walk in, see on your screen... But and this is four people walk in see on your screen and say no thanks. What console? Am any I allowed console. to have? Un- you uh, have any console? Okay, VR. Okay. VR sex game. Okay. And I'm standing there, <laughs> uh, it, uh, experiencing it. Yeah. Uh, and they leave. They would leave. Are you? Or they would kill son? me. <laughs> are you? Are you a winning son? That's the that's the meme. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they kill you. They, we, so and that's fine. Oh, but that's the thing. All right. And then they steal the VR headset. Mm-hmm. That's uh, worth money. <laughs> that's worth money. So people don't know mm. that I was doing that. Oh, all right. So you just... you Your obituary is died from a gunshot wound. Died from a gunshot Several wound. Several gunshot wounds. Several gunshot Four. wounds. Four. <laughs> Four. <laughs> <laughs> With our powers combined. <laughs> Die. Die. Uh, but... All right, yeah, so can you... All right, so here's the real thing. Can you imagine playing like a... Like a VR game, like a sexy times VR game, just completely just hanging out in your house. Just like, the same way you would sit down and be like, ah, I'm gonna play a little bit of Call of Duty. Uh, I'm gonna play a little bit of Meet and Fuck 4. <laughs> Boop! You'd be surprised! <laughs> yeah, I guess I would. Uh, no. <laughs> you, I couldn't. Fortunately, I can't imagine I that. I couldn't do it. Uh, th- there's a big window... Right next to my mm-hmm. where I play games. Yes. Uh, so if anything, I would do it in my bedroom, <laughs> where there's another two window. Windows. There's two windows, and it is basement level, so people can easily see into it. Mm-hmm. Uh. I was thinking about video games that are like. Uh, you were thinking about video games. I was thinking about video games. I as often it, do. <laughs> as it turns out, you were thinking about video games. Occasionally, I will think about video games. Good. Uh, 
Who do you think is the last character for Smash? The last character? Well, it's not the well, last character. Not the last character, because Sakurai can't take a break. Um, I think... What was the... Because that was the last game Iwata asked him to make. What? Did you hear that? What? Uh, so Sakurai came out recently and he was talking and he was like, uh, hey, uh, thanks for all, everybody enjoying Smash. It means a lot to me. Uh, you guys don't know this, but the last game that Satoru uh, Iwata asked me to make was Smash Ultimate. Oh my god. So I'm trying to give it everything I've got, and it's like, you gotta be kidding. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's crazy. That's so heart-wrenchingly sweet. Yeah. Um, I'm glad it's doing so well then. Yeah. Um, last character... Uh, I was gonna be real mean. Uh, or, oh, what is a ghost. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> it's him. It's he, him. He, he, he. <laughs> and he wanted me to add him. <laughs> this is what he wanted. Um, it's hard to say. Mm -hmm. Like, who do you think... It's going to come out before the end of the year, right? Uh, it's going to be announced, at least, before the end of the year. Yeah, because Terry Bogart is still in development. Yeah, he's going to be probably, I would guess, late He's November. the last... He's probably November. End right? of this year. Uh, so last character, so, well, it might be an Overwatch character. That's the thought, right? It might, like, yeah. Uh, but there's, uh, an Overwatch character, because Overwatch is coming to Switch, which, just in time. Oh, yeah. Oh, people have been clamoring for another It'll have its four-year anniversary soon. That's insane. In, um, uh, May of next year. That's a... What a cultural phenomenon that just sort of... Uh, it's... Is Fortnite still, like, really popular? Yeah. Which is weird. Uh, have you seen the... They added Batman to it? They added Batman? Yeah, there's Batman in Fortnite now. Wow. Uh, I know... I didn't know that at first, but I saw an image, a gif, of Batman doing, like, one of, the, like, the running man or whatever. Oh, uh, wow. In Crime Alley next to his mother's uh, pearls oh, and stuff. Oh, no. And it's like, Jesus Christ, thanks, <laughs> video games. <laughs> also, the, not the running not man. Not the running man. <laughs> That's the, such an old... The orange... Like, there's orange justice, there's... Is that the one where he's, like, clapping and doing the thing backwards? No. Orange justice is, like, when they, like, get real low to the ground and they're... It's not that one. It's, like, the one where you clap your hands and you sort of, like... You do, like, a movement. Uh, I don't know. I that don't one. Know that one is. The Fortniters know what's up. Yeah, they... Yeah, of course. They know what's up. But, uh... I kind of... I just noticed something that makes me kind of annoyed uh, in Elder Scrolls lore. Yeah. If we can bring that back for real, real quick. Uh, in Elder Scrolls, there's just a thing that's called Cure Disease. It's right. like you can make a potion that's like that. Uh, and if you go to any uh, spot, anything in... Uh, any shrine to a god, Adra, not Daedra. Sure. Uh, and you pray to that shrine, it says, all diseases cured. And I'm like, that's not, I don't like that. Because, like, you'll see people dying from, like, rock joint or something. Go pray. Uh, literally, it's, it it's, works. Or, like, you can eat a hawk's feather. And be fine. It has its first. It has its first ingredient thing as cure disease. Oh, <laughs> yeah. And it it just got me. And, and I just sort of realized this now. I'm like, this is not a good way to go about things. I feel. Uh, it's like that shouldn't be readily available to the player. Yeah. Like I understand there's healing magic, but that's like. Close up your wounds, healing magic. That's not cure a disease. So that's the thing, right? Uh, the unfortunate part of a video game, where in uh, you have if you put diseases in your world, right, and you make them matter, they can't both matter to the player and the world. Yeah. Because if they matter to the player, they can't be permanent. So they have to be easily fixable. And even if you unless had to it's go like a, unless it's like a heavy. Uh, Realistic world, yeah, or like a which I'm sure there are story based to disease, yeah. So, all right, so what's the uh, actual answer, right? You get rock joint, yeah. Uh, you can't fast travel anymore. There's one doctor that cures rock joint, 
way the fuck on the other side of the map. And you don't know where they are. Yeah, they, it's not like a quest. A disease, could, like, but that could be a quest, right? So you go to the apothecary, right? Yeah. Any apothecary, you're like, I'm suffering from rack joint, and they're like, that's terrible. We don't know. Uh, e we either don't know where the doctor, but I or I hear there's a doctor in X place. So it's like, and it couldn't, and you could okay. So and it doesn't even have to be that city. It could be just the rift. Yeah. Uh, I hear there's a doctor in the rift somewhere. Yeah, like oh, there is a doctor. Thank you. Yeah. Um. And so you would have to go there uh, on foot. Which I love the idea, or you could use the carriage. The carriage system, yeah. Makes uh, the which carriage system I, worth it. I really so I've going back to that that Dyson playthrough real quick. I I did not use fast travel. Yeah. Like for the longest time when I because it was like the first character I really dove back into like new the, the PS4 Skyrim on. Uh, I was like I want to just experience the game again. Uh, so if anything, I'm doing carriage systems uh, or. I'm just walking. Yeah. And I, it's, it, you miss so much in the game when you're just fast traveling around. Um, and it breaks your immersion, immersion really quick. Yeah, nothing uh, takes you out of the game like a loading screen. And then I jumped in as Jarek, I'm like, fast travel, no, no problem. Yeah. Jarek would fast travel. Um, but, yeah, because that makes it more, that makes the, the world feel better, right? Uh, and if you're going that way, you can also find people who have had rock joint, yeah. like, uh, or people who are still looking for them, like, uh, and you can meet some interesting characters that way. So, the that's the thing here. This is higher fantasy, right? Yeah. So let me peak fantasy, right? Uh, or what's the opposite of? There's like the live low between. fantasy, low fantasy, yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Low fantasy game, right? You go to the apothecary. You have rock joint. And they're like, take some herb of dry root. Yeah. Known to cure rock joint. It poisons you. Yeah. Doesn't heal you at all. Makes your rock joint worse. And you're like, what the fuck? Makes your... No, it, it relaxes your muscles. Yeah. Because it's a poison. So it makes you poison. weaker. Yeah. Uh, so you feel the rock joint less. <laughs> so you feel the rock joint less. Yeah. Your muscles are not strong enough to... Force the rock joint. And then if you have a high enough intelligence to survival, you're like, you poisoned me. Mm -hmm. Get that off your shelves or I'll kill you. Right. How will you kill me, rock joint man? Hell, I can push you over these. I can shout. <laughs> I can shout real loud. <laughs> my weak ears. The muscles <laughs> in my ears. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, that's a fun one. I mean, I would love to play a low fantasy game. Isn't that what you're... Uh... That's Witcher, I guess. Wasn't that your the game you were playing that was very scary? On your computer? On my computer. The one with Oh, you're right. Pillars, Pillars of Eternity. Yeah, that was love fantasy. That's true. I but I want it to be like a Skyrim game. Yeah, a Skyrim but low fantasy. You want a, somebody to mod Skyrim. Make it low fantasy. Make it low fantasy. Sure no dragons. But I mean well No giants. That would just be middle aged. Yeah. The dark ages. So what's so low fantasy there are dragons. Uh, like, I guess low fantasy is kind of like Dragon Age, right? Uh, so let me paint the picture. Dragon Age Origins, right? All right, sure. I'll paint a different picture for you after you're done. Okay. Elves are oppressed. Mm. They their their magical nation has been shattered to pieces, and they're just tribes, roaming tribes. Uh, mages are seen with distrust and concern, and they're locked in towers. Uh, where they are forbidden of using blood magic, uh, and they're like a risk of being taken by demons. Uh, there's constantly like the fear of uh, hordes of uh, ravenous plagued beasts storming into the lands anywhere. Yeah. Uh, because the caverns that they live in are connected to everything. Uh, because the old dwarves fell and died. Right. Uh, and their empire stretched to the entirety of the underground, because no one else lives there. Yeah. Uh, Very easy to stretch. There are these roaming... Uh, they're, they're not roaming, but there are people of, like, severe might that are, like, uh, known to be... to follow a very rigid code that clashes with so many other uh, cultures... 
uh, and they're seen as like barbarians to everyone, uh, and they just are terrifyingly strong. Yeah, uh, and they don't have names. Mm. They're just uh, their title. Their what their job is is their name. Uh, and then your mage friend casts haste on you five times. Well, yeah, <laughs> and you cleave through the battlefield like a spinning top. You cleave yeah. through those uh, those kunari real quick. <laughs> uh, so the thing is, is that <laughs> low fantasy or is that dark fantasy? That's dark fantasy. You know, you know, it's low fantasy. What? Minecraft. Minecraft is low fantasy. Minecraft is low fantasy. Uh, so much happens in Minecraft that you are just completely unaware of, right? What's your magical power in Minecraft? Crafting. Yeah. The, but, the ability to build. And that's it. That's true. While all this stuff happens around you, right? These beings teleport around, steel blocks scream at you, these exploding monsters walk up and explode, and you have no way to stop this. There's not, you're Except not some... to build a sword and fight them. Yeah, there's not some end-all, be-all thing. You can craft portals to other worlds, and you can... But they aren't better than the world you occupy. Yeah, and it's not like... And once you enter this world, it's not like you become any better. You are... And, like, uh, if you don't look at a guide or anything, you don't know what you're doing, really. That's true, yeah. You don't know where to find things, you don't know where to get things, there's no fast travel system. That's a real shame. That, uh, I guess it's a, it's a double-edged sword, Minecraft's popularity. Yeah. Because, uh, like, man, if I could go into Minecraft blind, yeah, that'd be a, that'd be such a different experience. It's sort of what it feels like coming in after, like, waiting, like, the four years it's been, it had been since I picked up Minecraft. Yeah. Uh, but, like, at the... You want s some spoilers for Minecraft? Shh, I don't mind at all. So, once you beat the Ender Dragon, right, you get to go back to the end. And you get to go to End Villages. You get to go... What? There's towns and villages in the end. Really? They added that? Yeah. Uh, and there's shulker boxes, or shulkers are the enemies, that'll just, like, blow you up from a distance. Uh, so you have to, like, kill them, and if you get to, like, the top of... the very top of the towers, you get wings. Right. So, and they... I didn't know they put those in the actual game. I thought they were just, like, in mini games. But you get the wings. And that's the single most, like, magical thing you do... In Minecraft. Right. Is you can... You take to the skies after doing everything else. Because by all means, you are always just a person in Minecraft. And that's the thing. Yeah. I mean, because the only way to go underwater is to find... You have to craft a potion in yeah. order to do it. You craft potions or you make something to do it. Nothing in Minecraft is... I mean, like, you regenerate health... Uh, but after you, only if you eat. Yeah, you have to eat food to heal, which is how people work. That's how things work. Right. But otherwise, uh, you're just a person. You can't eat, like, raw meat. Yeah. I mean, because that's why, I mean, stuff like that, that's what made Skyrim... Doing that made, gave me some of the most uh, intense uh, feelings in Skyrim is when I modded the game to be heavy survival, yeah, uh, heavy sound effects, stuff like that, that's what made me feel the most immersed, the most terrified yeah. of the country of Skyrim. Because, like, I'm sure I've told you this before, like, when my laptop could handle it, yeah. I modded the shit out of Skyrim, and then I immediately went so hard on the survival aspect of it, uh, and I was just, and also uh, all the sexy mods, of course. Oh, of course, yeah. Uh, two, two things you got to do first: survival and bigger titties. And of course, <laughs> um, but like when I'm trekking through the harsh mountains looking for a cave, uh, and I just sort of stop for a minute and like see if I have enough food left to survive. Yeah. Uh, and like I just like. Uh, hear the whipping ri uh, winds uh, and hear my character like take in like shaky cold breaths. I'm like, oh my god. Yeah, uh, one of the things I wish I could have had that in Skyrim when I was playing it because uh, nothing made me like 
split like I was like it, this could be so much more immersive than my Argonian trekking through like the Arctic lands of the north but like double fire spells in hand and I was like damn this would be sweet to like do in real life like, yeah about to freeze to death but consistently just like costly blasting like a fire out of your hands yeah to keep yourself warm I'd love to set up camp in a game and have it matter like you can like in Skyrim in the mods that you can get like, you can do that. Yeah. There's, like, a camp set mod. And it's... Uh, uh, mix it with the survival mod, and it's... You need to sleep. That's yeah. like, that's important. Uh, it's, a di- it's a difficult game to sell, which is why mods are so often do it. Mods are so... Like, that's what makes Skyrim as good as it is, is yeah. the mods. Because, uh, and it's, it's the same thing. It's why I always like going on to survival on to hard for Minecraft. Because... I like relaxing and building things from time to time, but making a castle is so much more satisfying when I know that the world was consistently trying to kill me while I did it. Yeah. That despite everything, I still built that. It's sort of the same thing uh, why I keep going on to uh, competition. Any game that lets me fight against uh, my allies, I'm going to go into. Yeah. Because it adds an extra layer into it. Right. A loot chest is so much more exciting when you have to figure out who gets it. It's something I wish Conan Exiles had given me. Yeah. Because uh, it has all of that. But it's just... And the boobs. Uh, <laughs> but it's just too much. Yeah. It's like... The menus show too much of what you can do. Yeah. Because uh, there's, like, there's the gods you can pray to. Like, you can increase your standings. Here's what you can craft right now, but here's what you need to craft it. Mm. Uh, here's what you can't craft. Oh. Uh, and that's everything. Yeah. Uh, you can build, like, massive keeps, but you don't know how to yet. You don't have the... I don't have the motivation to do that. Not if I die and lose everything, uh, and need to make the same trek back over there and then walk back while maintaining my health, uh, stamina, my hunger, my thirst. Yeah. There's, uh... All the while trying to navigate the menus, the awkward made-for-PC menus. Yeah. If it wasn't made for PC, like, if the menus were properly ported to a console game, I think I would have really enjoyed it. It's already so dark. It is dark, Jesus yeah. Christ. Like, because I have to go into my radial menu, I have to go in my normal menu, put it into my radial menu, oh, wow. and then open my radial menu and put it down. Ugh. Yeah. Uh, that's a problem, especially with games nowadays, uh, is that if you're going to be able to do everything, you need to start small. Small. And you can't show them what you can do. Yeah. Uh, so, here's what I like, because Minecraft added in a, a good thing at a crafting station and at a stove you can do almost anything. Yeah. Uh, and then in further updates, they give you uh, specific things that let you do... Blast furnaces, blast stone furnaces, cutters. Stone cutters, but you don't need them. Yes. They you, are better. They are better, but you do not need them to do everything. Yeah. In Conan Exiles, it is, you need a drying rack, you need a furnace, you need a anvil, mm. you need all of these different things... Just to get a piece of equipment uh, that you'll lose as soon as you die. And there's so many things that can kill you. Too, too low fantasy. Like, because at the end of the day, uh, and I'm, I'm sure that appeals to some people. It, I'm sure it does. But also, real quick, so you start in like a desert, right? And the first place you'll probably go is like this big canyon valley thing that has like a river that lets you constantly drink. Yeah. Which is good. But there's, like, you can only go, like, right, because if you go straight north, uh, there is an encampment of people that you just aren't strong enough to take down. Nice. And it's in, like, if you can kill, like, a few of them, that's good. You can get their equipment. But their equipment isn't enough to let you uh, take down the rest of them, you know? But you were saying... Low fantasy something. Uh, Yeah, that's too low fantasy. Uh... Because 
you, I mean, I guess everybody's got a different threshold for everything. Everyone has a different threshold for everything. And the problem when you're trying to make a video game is you have to hit that same threshold for everyone. Yeah. Which I is, think The Witcher 3 really succeeded. Yeah. In that I, regard. Game of the year 2011. And it's getting <laughs> 2013, right? I don't know. I don't know. Regardless, people love it. Yeah. And, uh, and it's still being ported to Switch. Oh. I don't know how they're doing that, but they are. Um, uh, copy, paste, paste. Of course, <laughs> yes. But it has a good amount of things, like oh, uh, Gerald can drink potions, like magic potions. But if he drinks too many, he gets potion sickness. I love that. That's some of my absolute favorite stuff. So you can't spam potions, because like uh, Skyrim feels awful when it comes to potions. Yeah. When you just open the menu and drink, like, ten. Uh, but, like, so there's this these things that's, like, you'll get, po- like you'll get poisons, you'll get boosts, you'll get potion buffs, and stuff like that, and you just stack them. Yeah. You don't think about it. You don't think about using them in the heat of the moment, unless you're, like, going real hard. As someone with ADHD, yeah. it's terrible when I'm playing a game like that, and I'm, like, all I need, all I need are the stamina... Health and magic potions. That's all I need. I'm spamming them real hard in the food, and I'm just spamming the food. Uh, s- like, sometimes I'll think to be like, oh, let me buff two-handed or something like that. Yeah. But I'll hold on to so many buff potions that's like, why would why would my two-handed barbarian need buff one-handed? You'll never know. Never know. Uh, buff charm. You'll never Even know. Even in games where weight matters, I'm like, it only weighs like a half a pound. Yeah, you it's don't think about it. it to throw but then away. your potion category is the biggest in the game. I'm like, what am I doing with all these poisons? I don't use poisons on this character. Yeah. Let me just drink them all. Get them and out it's of my so taxing to use them in other characters, too. It's like opening it up, choosing which poison you'll use for one strike. Yeah. Even if you do use them, it's not very good. It's not like a fun thing to do. Uh, I've never been a huge fan of games where uh, combat consists of, all right, hold on, pause the game. Push, 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 I mean, if you're using... I guess if you're using a stealth character with potions hotkeyed, it's a different thing. Like, so you always just have it equipped so you can tap it. And if you're stealthing in and you're shooting a bow, that's... You want it to be one shot. Yeah. But still. Yeah, uh... That was my problem with the Bloodstained boss I got into. Huh. Like, you know you have a good boss fight when my strategy just became buy as many potions as I can, go back and fight them, and just press through the fight, get the fucking potions halfway through the fight, use every potion I got. Yeah. Oh, look fun. Video games. Yeah, that's Thanks, bad. Bloodstained. Ugh. The boss fight's so bad, they did it twice. They really I did. Tell, I, I don't know if I've talked about that one on the podcast. I don't think you have. You Zangetsu, first, second boss fight. Terrible. Piece of shit, boss. Took me like 20 tries to beat him. Because uh, his he doesn't really have super clear patterns. Uh, he hits you for a fuck ton of damage. Uh, not There's not really a great way to fight him because all of your range, his range is just better. Uh, and he has these like, huge screen clearing attacks. And in order to... There's no way to, no way to jump and dodge. Because sometimes he'll just turn around and hit you. Uh, and I beat it, finally. And it was just like, god damn it. And then you fight him again. Oh, the fight, first fight, two forms. Uh, so, alright, shitty. Yeah. Uh, I don't know how many people are always like, there's another form to this boss fight. Yes! Uh, doesn't happen. Uh, I got the bad ending to the game, which is where you just find the final boss and you kill him. Yeah. Uh, what? That's yeah, the bad ending? that's the bad ending. Ugh. Uh, because technically the final boss was, like, your friend. Uh, so I'm like, alright, well, fuck. I guess I'll go try and do the other stuff, and I'll explore more of the map, and I got lo- I got blockaded, like, several times. Uh, at one point, you literally just have to start reversing everywhere on the map, just everywhere, and hope it works. Like, you get the ability to flip gravity. Yeah. And you just have to just start doing it. That's bad. And hope it works. That's like, not fun. Because you go to a tower, and if you do it immediately on the second half of the tower, uh, you'll land next to a thing... Which contains like ch- uh, plate mail that lets you avoid spike damage, so then you can walk through spikes on a different side of the map. And oh my it's like, god! I hate you, dude. Yeah. Uh, anyways, you fight through the worst area in the game, and then so second worst. This one area is also bad. 
and you fight and you fight him and he's like hey i got something to tell you but i only talk with swords and it's like fuck and then you fight him again and he's two times worse Five forms. Five forms? Five forms. I died, like, so many times. This is the second boss, right? This is the same thing as the second boss? Same basic one as the second boss. Like, nothing has changed. So the first and the second form are the same, except he gets an attack, where he just says, Hey, hope you're lucky, uh, because he puts up these four pillars, and if you're anywhere even touching the pillars, you take, like, a quarter of your health, and it's just like... God damn it, dude. Awful. If, and if you're in the air, you can't control yourself well enough to dodge this shit. Uh, and, like, yeah, five forms. Because uh, I've died so many times on the third one, and I was like, Jesus Christ, alright, my bad. I'm gonna go, and then I'm gonna buy a bunch of potions. And then I got to the fourth form, died a dozen times. Ugh. I got to the fifth form, and I was like, you gotta be joking. You have gotta be joking with this. Who was playing this fight? Who was playtesting this and was like, God damn, this fight is just so good and rewarding for all the skills I've learned throughout the game that I think I had another form. Oh, boy. Uh, and I was just like, dude, eat shit. I hate you. <laughs> like, <laughs> halfway through the hundred tries it took me. Every other boss in the game, by the way, I've beaten in my first try. Really? Like, with the exception of, like, the third boss, who took me two tries... <laughs> Every other boss, like, oh, maybe Miriam took me two tries. But they were fun and challenging, right? Yeah, uh, and I got to use, like, I was like, alright, I got some interesting trays. They have patterns that make sense. They go kind of long, and maybe I use, like, a potion or two. But they all make sense. Right. This one did fucking not. And then you beat him, and he's like, oh, pretty good. And she's like, you're still holding back. And I was like, fuck. Don't what? tell him that. Why the hell? Who does that in video games, right? The second boss who gives you a run for your money and you're like, he's so much more powerful than I am. He was holding back. You beat him again five times harder. He's still holding back? Yeah. This dude, he's it's got... like the Saitama alien uh, prince fight. Yeah, literally. So, and I want you to understand how painful this is for me. Except it's the opposite because he had multiple forms and Saitama didn't. Yeah, he's a black and red samurai... Voiced by Solid Snake. Oh, well, I can understand why they would want him to give him that fight. By all means, this dude should be the coolest guy in the world. To y me. You should love him, but he sucks. Because he's like, uh, yeah, the guy possessing your uh, best... F the demon possessing your best friend, uh, I'm here hunting her. But she runs away every time she sees me because I'm too fucking cool. <sighs> here, take my sword. And you have to kill her when she shows up because she won't fight me. Because she's scared of me. And it's like... Christ, leave. <laughs> uh, and then, so, you do that fight. Also stupid. I walk back, I kill the best friend again. And you get a different ending. Still bad. What you have to do is, 75% of the way through the fight, the moon turns red. And you have to slash the moon with the sword he gave you. And I'm like, did you ever want to write this down? Or have I just been playing a point-and-click adventure game this whole time? Jesus Christ. It sucks. That's, that's too much. It's all too much. Like, that, it, it reminds me of the like of Dark Souls stuff. Yeah, that's uh, really what it there's is. There's like Dark Souls 1 to get to like the f one of the final areas or get... No, it's like get an item. Uh, get... An item to progress to, like, one of the final areas, you need to be on an elevator and then jump out of the elevator halfway through. Nice. Like, through a hole that you think is just, like, a set piece. Yeah. Uh, and then you grab it on a ledge. And it's like, really? <laughs> really right there? Really, that's where it is right there? How how was anybody ever supposed to find this shit? I guess Dark Souls uh, is like, explore. That's all you gotta do. You can only explore. Like, that's fire, I that's fair, I guess. There's a difference, though, between exploring and purposefully hiding shit. Like, I, I've talked about the puzzle before that's like, you, uh, there's a train station in Bloodstain, and I'm like, what the fuck? What? I don't understand how where to go from here. And uh, what you have to do, and it's like, I've done everything I can, but what you have to do is go back to the librarian yeah. who tells you that you need an ID, and he gives you his ID, but he's like, oh, you'll need a picture.
to get the ID, which you... I already had taken the picture and didn't know what the fuck it was for. Yeah. But I didn't know to go to talk to the librarian, of all things. Yeah, so, uh... Dark Souls loves to hide shit. Yeah. Like, uh, in, like, bad ways, because it's, like... Very rarely do games hide things in good ways. You should never, ever hide games behind fake walls that don't give any inclination that they're fake other than players saying fake wall ahead or illusion ahead. Yeah. I don't want that because, like, I'll see those messages five times out of, like, no, nine times out of ten. Yeah, people do it to fuck with you. I'll see that, look around, hit walls, get nothing, and then go on my way and be like, was I just an idiot? Yeah. Was there actually one there and I didn't know? No. I mean, every like, t- I'll, I'll, like, watch people play Dark Souls games, uh, and then they'll, like, hit a wall, and there'll be an illusion there. I'm like, what? <laughs> every time uh, I hear, I think about the Bloodborne uh, umbilical cord pieces, I get an aneurysm. Oh, boy. That's, yeah, I guess it's, uh, I guess I won't say, none of the endings are bad. Yeah. So, I, I can't, I won't say they're, like... Bloodborne has that going in its corner, I guess. Uh, that it's o- the only thing it's hiding is a boss fight, but the final boss fight without it is already cool enough. Yeah. Uh, like, the f- like fighting the first hunter, that's a cool way to end it. That, like, uh, and you either become him, uh, like, you see what can become after. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, I don't know... I think the I think the umbilical cord comes in just good enough ways, like just well enough that it's not bad. Yeah. Like so, because you haven't played Bloodborne enough. No, I haven't. Played Bloodborne. Like, because I know there are ways to get the umbilical cord. There are like three pieces, um, and they're they're not too hidden. If you have, if you want to look for them, you can. Yeah. Uh, but they come in other ways that aren't like what you are trying to get. Uh, one of them is kind of weird. Uh, you find two women. Yeah. Uh, and one woman can heal you, and the other woman can heal you. Uh, I think. Yes, uh, but if you heal too many times, like there's a there's a prostitute and a holy woman, and the holy woman is a, is very jealous, uh, and they sit in the chapel. You yeah. save people in a chapel. Yes. Uh, as long as you send them to the right place. As long as you send them to the right place, yeah. Uh, so if you keep, if you hold on to the prostitute, if you but if you heal from her, you'll like if you when you talk to her. You yeah. will see the holy woman stand up and look at you from around the corner. Huh? Uh, yeah. Like, out of jealousy. Yeah. Uh, and if you keep that going, she will kill the prostitute. And this loses out on a, an umbilical cord piece. So oh. you don't know this. Uh, yes. Uh, I, and it's been a long while since I played Bloodborne, so this might not be correct. Um, but if you hold out, if you don't do either of them. Sure. If, if they're both there, it, I don't think the Holy Woman needs to be there. But if the prostitute is there for long enough, when the, when the, when the night gets, when you get further into the night, she will give birth to a creature. Oh. Uh, and you kill it, you get an umbilical cord piece. Ah, yes. Uh, so it's, if you, because she can heal you without you having to reset the map. That may, yeah, that's That's fair. the thing. Because if you go to a lantern... And all the beasts come back. Yeah. Um, and it's in a very wide area of use that you'll probably be coming back to her from time to time. Yeah. Um, so it's definitely... Uh, it, But there's also Yosefka, who... Uh, you leave the first clinic you're in, and when you try to come back, because sometimes you'll, yeah. you'll be interested in that... Uh, you'll find that it's being occupied by a woman named Yosefka, who will heal you. Yeah. Uh, if you... And then eventually you come from the back, right? Yeah. Uh, and you can open the door, and you can venture into the clinic, 
uh, which you'll probably want to do. Yes. Because it was locked to you for a while. And it's an and if you kill Yosefka, you get an umbilical cord piece. Hmm. Why do you kill Yosefka? Because she's a mo- she's yeah, fake. She's, a, yeah. she's like uh, she is a mage that is like luring people in with false securities and stuff like that. Yeah, makes sense. It's also pretty scary inside the clinic itself. Yeah. Because uh, it's like just run down clinic. Also, I think you hear a baby crying. Probably. Maybe? Is I that the know. key to an umbilical cord? Uh, that's. Yeah, that's... I think so. Maybe? I don't know. Speaking of you being wrong, uh, yeah. you can equip two action and skill abilities with Zane. Yeah? Yeah. Oh. Uh, you just lose out on your grenade. Oh. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. Cause that makes... That's good, though. Yeah. Uh, so, because that's what I was doing with Zane. I was, like, struggling for a second. Because uh, I always feel like the menus are harder to navigate when I'm trying to equip action skills. Because I'm like, am I selecting the action skill now? Why is this not as easy as just pressing a button? Yeah. <laughs> Which I've been thinking recently about switching up my Iron Bear to just two punches instead of uh, the gun Railgun. And, gun and punch. Which is going to use a lot of gas very quick. But it's a lot of damage. A lot of punch also. Uh, but yeah, I switched to the... Because one of his action skills, or one of his uh, perks or skills, normal skills is your action skill time increases for each action skill you have active. That's pretty good, yeah. kind of nuts. Yeah. Party wants to look that up. How to gain umbilical cord pieces. Yeah. It's the kind of thing that... Uh, I wonder if I can do it. It's uh, The problem with Metroidvanias and why I shouldn't play them is because I don't like walking into walls. Oh, uh, no. But I just got a, a video recommendation from Inside Gaming that says Fortnite needs new players, adds bots. Oh. So maybe it's not as uh, popular as I thought. Yeah. Uh, but I don't like walking into walls. So if you're uh, making a Metroidvania, consider uh, having a little guy to tell you where to go. Yeah. Having a little person. Maybe they work in the shop. Maybe you have to pay them. Uh, and they can say... Consider this thing, because that's what Bloodstained almost has. There's a lady. Uh, there's a lady in front of the, it, or she works in the shop, and she's like, "Hey, uh, here's a little hint about where you need to go." Yeah. And it sucks because I was like, I'm so confused, man. Where do I go? Uh, and she was like, but the conversation was like, but Zangetsu has already learned how to fly, and it's like, what? What? And just like learn for look for that beast, and I'm like, I don't need to know what beast to kill. If I walk up on a boss, I'm gonna stab it to death. Yeah. What the fuck? That is so such stupid advice. How do I find the boss? Right. Like, what what does Bloodstained think? Like, I was gonna walk into a boss door and be like, nope, not dealing with that one. Thank you. Right. No. Never. Not ever. <laughs> so I, I'm looking it up now. Okay. Um. The first one, so I was I was correct. Uh, I didn't say it, but my I, my theory was uh, you'll receive it for killing Murgo's wet nurse, uh, which is a I think it's a non optional boss. Right. Uh, so so you'll, it, it tells you to get you'll get one of them. Yeah. Because Murgo's wet nurse, uh, you'll you'll find it like cradling a baby carriage. Yeah. Like a baby cradle. Um. Second one, if you've talked to Ariana early on and sent her off to the chapel, you'll find her in the cathedral ward section of the game. Refer to that part. I don't know. Once she's sent there, you'll find her in the room between chapel and the tomb of Odin. Uh, to get the cord, you'll have to kill her baby. Yeah. So, um, wait. The third umbilical cord is obtained by going to the healing church workshop and dropping down by the bit where the path breaks on the lower section, you should now be in a circular room, head to the middle of the upper platform, Jesus Christ. and then turn around until you're facing the way you came in, look right below to spot a platform, drop in onto it, taking a little damage in the process, then fall onto the next platform to reach a door, go through to access the abandoned workshop. It's there? Did you go to the abandoned workshop? I did go to the abandoned workshop. Uh, um, great Dark Souls game design. Uh, do some falling... <laughs> Yeah, that's not the best, but, like, the Abandoned Workshop is a fun place to find. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's it, that's the thing. This is a, it's a great reward when you do find it, 
there are oh, there are four. There are four. So you have to get all four. Uh, you'll find the final piece. Yeah. Uh, but the fun thing about the abandoned workshop is you find an uh an unliving doll there. Oh. Yeah. Huh. Like it's the same. It's the same as the hunter's dream. Like you walk into it, you think. Oh, it's, the abandoned workshop is the hunter's dream, isn't it? It was a hunter's dream at one point. Huh. Like it has the same steps. It has the same building. Yeah, I have all of seen that. that. It it's so it's one of those things. It makes so much of the lore, so much of the world feel more like wrong, and at the same time, like so much more interesting. At the same, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, a real goosebumps kind of thing. Yeah, I just got goosebumps thinking, I also about, got goosebumps it. thinking about it. Uh, you'll find the final piece in Yusefka's clinic. Yep. Um, look for a patient on one of the tables, then kill the patient to get the cord. So I don't know if you, so it's not killing Yusefka. Uh Once you've used at least three cords, Jesus Christ! So you only need three. Oh, cords. so you only need three, so you can miss one of them. Um, but yeah, so uh, which uh, it's unfortunate for me because I found out about it like late game. Yeah. Uh, after I after the prostitute had been killed, mm. and I don't think I was able to get the lat. I don't. I think I was still able to get it. Yeah. But by the time I had killed uh, the final boss before the true ending, yeah, I didn't want to play it anymore. That's fair. Like, I was fine not playing through Bloodborne again. You know what's funny that I think about sometimes? What? Back when, like, Bloodborne was fresh and new and I was, like, kind of getting into it, I was like, after I finish up this one, I kind of want to do, like, a gunslinger build. <laughs> oh, like, I kinda wanna do, like, I'm so sad to hear you say that. I'm like, I want to do, like, a, this kind of build. Maybe I'm... Maybe I'm Real challenge mode? I go, like, a brawler character? Uh, me, avid Bloodborne hater. <laughs> Man, I feel so bad. Because I know you'd love it. If you didn't have this, such a bad experience with it. Yeah, uh, every part, every beginning, my entire first three levels with Bloodborne were a cacophony of terrors. Oh, man. Uh, from the terrible first boss uh, to getting walk through the next two levels, and you're not, and you're talking about. Uh, I'm not talking about cleric beast. You're not talking about cleric beast. I'm talking about uh, gas coin. Who's the real first boss? Who everybody hates. Uh, no one hates gas coin. Everybody hates gas coin. The first uh, you, me, and the two other people we were playing Bloodborne with all cheesed it. Everybody was like, "Here's how I cheesed gas coin." How did I cheese gas coin? I don't remember, but you did. None of us were like, "I had a good, honest fight with gas coin." Yeah. It was like, ah, oh, I got him so to a point where he couldn't hit me through the tree, and then I threw fucking Molotov cocktails at him. <laughs> yeah, and that's it's gas coin. It's tough. I don't know why. Uh. I, it sets the mood. I understand, but Gascoin could have been dealt with like as a not a boss, but like in a random encounter. Yeah. Uh, like not even a random encounter, like a hunter that transforms into a beast halfway through. Yeah. But it's one you don't have to fucking fight. Yeah. Um, like I understand his importance to the world and all that. Of course, yeah. It in the like music box and stuff. All right, it's cool. Fight sucks. Music box, that's like the the big thing, right? Yeah. Doesn't change anything if you play it. It stuns him. It Yeah, it stuns him. But whatever. So small. Three hits. You can do it twice. <laughs> and you should absolutely do it twice in his beast mode. But it like but if you do it like in his <laughs> hunter mode. Shame on me. I mean, yeah, but if you do it in his hunter mode, he becomes beast mode faster. Oh, wow, that's a good little <laughs> trick for you. Yeah. Get to the worst part of the fight. Yeah. Where he starts just jumping and falling on you and you can barely tell what's going on in this See, close quarters area with I've, a bunch of shit in it. Cleric Beast and Gascoin should have switched places. Yes. Cleric Beast is, n like, not... It, it doesn't mean anything. You don't need it at all. Yeah. Uh, Cleric Beast is much more beatable than Gascoin because he's easier to dodge and he's easier to hit. And it's one fight the whole and time. one fight the whole time. Uh... Gascoin is very tough, and it's it. He's a reward. He should be a reward for ki like. There should be a better reward for killing him, uh, like an item or like because you get the wife's brooch. But your reward is you get to keep playing you get to keep Bloodborne. Playing Bloodborne. 
That shouldn't be the reward. Like, that's the reward in every one. In yeah. every single boss fight of the game. Except Cleric Beast. Except for Cleric Beast. Which is stupid. Who's the tutorial boss. And you can skip him. And I did skip him. And it made a worse experience because of it. I don't think it would have changed anything. I think it would have. You fought him. And you cheese gas going too. Yeah, but... <laughs> but I beat the game still. Well, that's... If you beat Cleric Beast, you beat the game. That's the cheat code. That's the cheat code. If you don't beat him, you're gonna get your friends are gonna be like, "Hey, all right, let's just run you through some levels." So yeah, they shouldn't have done that. They should have done that. No, that's uh, stupid. That was bad of them. Yeah. Um, you would have a real bad time uh, playing a video game. You do that. Uh, yeah. You get dragged along by somebody else through the video game. You would have a good time playing a video game. I played Borderlands with Alan. Set it to a competition. Uh, I was playing Zane, uh, and I was level 1, and he was like level 13. And it starts you with just the pistol, uh, and then you just gotta fight for your life. Yeah. I was like, back to the wall so often. You want some apple cider? Isabel's brought us some apple cider. Apple cider for the podcast. After an hour long podcast. We should stop with the podcast. We should stop though. It is a great time. I understand why people do those challenge runs where they turn off XP now. Yeah. Because, uh, oh my god, just the amount of thinking you have to do. Uh, those are the Kingdom Hearts playthroughs. Yeah. We should talk about more challenge runs next episode or something. Yeah, that's probably a good idea. Uh, Especially so, if there's no video game news. That's true. This week. Uh, so yeah, remember to like, comment, and subscribe uh, for more. Uh, Apple Cider's delicious. It's pretty good. Uh, bye, guys.